I hope you heard me well all. And I, I have prepared this speech. Um, maybe it's, it, it's, it's quite easy, but maybe not so much. So I hope to be um, uh, as clear as possible. I mean, let's, let's uh, start to um, try to understand what, what the electrical grid it is. And let's start above all to, to understand what it was and what it is until now. So um, let's say that we can imagine the, the power grid as, as a river where the, the water flows from the mountain to the sea. And in the same way, the electrical grid, uh, the energy flows from unidirectionally from the generation to the load. So now the question is what it is the generation. As you know, all uh, uh, the, the, the generation can come from different sources. So first of all, uh, coal, oil, uh, hydro and nuclear. Let's talk like this for now. And then it's converted in electricity uh, thanks to uh, these machines that you see at the left, at the left that is called synchronous, synchronous generator. The first, the main characteristic of this way to generate electricity is the fact that it's easy, it, it is easy to be controlled and program, and it, and it is pro programmable. Um, for two reasons, basically, for the nature of the sources and for the, re for the nature of this kind of machines. So, okay, the electricity, um, uh, it's generated, then goes uh, to the electrical grid. So here I put just some picture uh, and you can see that some pylons are not, all of them are ugly. And then it goes uh, uh, to uh, the energy arrived to finally to the load. In Italy, the load is done more or less like this. So we have the 40% to the industry and the 20% goes to the homes. And this is a typical uh, consumption day in Italy. So you see that uh, in the night at 4 uh, a.m. we have basically the, the lowest consumption and then we peak around 10, 11 a.m. But now, uh, what is happening now in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the power grid? So what is happening is that the generation is starting to get closer to the load. So some energy flows is becoming the, is, the energy flows are becoming bidirectional. Some energy go back through the river like this salmon. Why, of course, for the renewables that um, presents, uh, present a lot of advantages like less environmental impact, near load, nearly zero operating costs, so they are even more cost effective. Of course, past installation, we can also say they can be more democratic, etc. But they have a big, let's say, a big problem, which is the fact to not be so easy, predictable, and, uh, and controllable. Now, why we are so uh, fixed, we, why we uh, really need and want control everything, not just because, because we are maniacal, but we have a big problem. The generation and load have to be instant by instant equal. So just to uh, perceive in, in, our, um, in our image, the, all the water that falls from the mountain should arrive uh, at the same time. I mean, the, the same quantity should arrive to the sea if there aren't any lakes in the middle. So uh, if we are not able to instantaneously create this balance, then, then this is what, what, what it happens, okay? The uh, pylon start to jump like this, okay? It's a big prob problem for, for the power grid. Now uh, we'll go fast in what can happen in the future of the uh, power grid. And uh, there are, let's say that there are two main directions. The super grid and the nano grid. I, I took some hours to do this slide, so I hope you like. And uh, um, I mean, just to explain you, the super grid are uh, big interconnection, electrical interconnections, able to move uh, big volumes of energy. The, the, the main idea, one of the main idea, ideas is the fact that uh, we can exploit like this the, the different local times. 
and of course the different climate zones so the different uh, the different uh, um, um, sources let's say possibility of, of feed by solar or wind etc um, then in the, on the opposite we have the nano grid which is represented here with uh, which represent the fact to um, um, put as close as possible the generation to the load. So here we have a photovoltaic, photovoltaic panel that uh, powered uh, an house and also sell a bit of energy to the grid. In the opposite case, in the case that the sun power is not enough, uh, some of the energy is took from, from the grid, is withdrawn from the grid. But the, um, another big transformation, another, another, another stuff will happen soon to the electrical grid because the electrical grid will take charge of the transport system that is becoming more, is becoming hopefully electrical. So the first question that we, we, we ask is, we have enough energy to feel, to feed all the electrical cars we have? And here we have some counts. Okay, at the 2030, this is just a calculation, probably will be more, but let's start with this. So at the 2030, uh, the 50% of the new cars sold will be electric. That means 5 million electric vehicles by 2030. That means 8.4 terawatt hour per year. That means just the 3% of the current electrical consumption in Italy. So basically, nothing not so much but let's be a bit more brave and let's say that today by tonight we replace all the entire park of circulating cars with with uh, with electrical cars that means 37 millions of car becomes electrical that means that now we need the 20 percent more of the of of the, of the electricity if you consider that this will not happen in one day, but in some decades, hopefully just one, but they are still 10 years, we have enough time to increase our energy of this quantity by renewables. But it's not so easy, otherwise there was no, no, no reason why I was doing this talk. Because we have the energy, but what we miss is the power. What I mean, I mean that if just the 0.5% of the first scenario of the 5 million electric vehicle try to charge contemporary, then we get the 30% 30, 30 of power peak. That means that in that curve of consumption that we saw before, we, we can get peaks of 30% of that quantity. We go back at the problem of balance between generation and load, as you know. And you know what happened if uh, uh, you know the pylons start to jump again. But there's there's a possibility maybe behind this because five million of electrical vehicles means two hundred gigawatt hour of potential storage. So here borns two two definition. Let's say the the idea is to use the uh, batteries of the electric vehicles in order to serve, to do service for the grid. So the first concept is called vehicle to home. When you have just a single car, let's say, that is doing, uh, is served to, the, to a nano grid. And in this case, it will improve the self-consumption of that house. Therefore, will does, will, will uh, uh, improve the quantity of energy um, uh, the consumption, the, uh, the quantity of energy consumed by your solar panel, okay? So your in, uh, electrical independency. Instead, the vehicle to grid, uh, it's one, when uh, not one, but thousands of cars, of batteries of cars are uh, serving the grid. To do what? To do basically, basically to just to simplify this job, withdraw energy during the late, the light, the light hours, and discharging this energy during the night. In this way, we we will able to uh, increase the stability of the of the grid and mm, 
match, better match the renewables and probably uh, it lead, lead to, uh, to us the possibility to increase the percentage of renewables in the grid. To do this, I mean, this needs to be done with uh, opportunity, uh, I mean, with, uh, with the right logic, with optimized logic, able to uh, decide which is the best charging, discharging patterns for not one, but thousand contemporary battery of the electric vehicles. So what I have done, these three years of PhD is basically this, I invented, let's say my own logic, able to do this job, uh, I will be fast in this part. I will just try to explain you the main ideas of, uh, behind my my logic. It's the um, so the fact is that I tried to create an algorithm help, uh, able to forecast or or better estimate the behavior of a single car. So. I have, for example, I have a 200, 200 uh, data set of 200 vehicles for three years. So, basing on uh, on the on what the single vehicles, uh, single vehicle did in the last uh, three years, I, I estimate it is next day. As you see here, for example, uh, I have three vehicles. The bars represent the trip. When there's no bars, means that the car is parked is parked somewhere and the blue is there what the uh, car is really doing and the red is what i have forecasted as you see for the first uh, vehicle uh, my forecast was basically perfect for the second well not so much the third i completely mistaken but but it's part of the job um, so this forecast goes to another logic which decide an optimization uh, an optimized uh, discharging charging discharging pattern for all the vehicles and then this optimized pattern goes to the real time rule based logic which decide which adjust the results basing on what is happening at that time minute by minute so this is the main idea and then I tested it for uh, bagel to home and bagel to G. So for the bagel to home, uh, my logic showed uh, shown uh, show a, a ten percent more self consumption um, than a normal logic. Let's say a logic that doesn't make use of any forecast. So it's a, a good result actually. So um, the idea is, uh, of course, this this forecast are done by me, but uh, this is a good news because um, better al uh, forecast algorithms can, uh, can lead to better results. Um, so 10% more of self-sufficiency for, for the vehicle to home instead of the vehicle to grid. I'm still working on that, but from, from the first results, what I can see is that uh, uh, first, it works because uh, any all all of the, the customers had um, the energy they need to do their trips, and uh, it's uh, still uh, um, available. The half percent, the half of their battery, to uh, make uh, these uh, grid services. Well, I hope I have been clear. Uh, feel free to do uh, every question you want. This part, of course, there's a lot of other stuff to say. Uh, so I'm happy to, to answer you. For now, I've finished it. Just the last thing I want to say is um, we, are, we are just at the beginning of these technologies of, of the electrical vehicles and all of the batteries. So we will see what it what will really happen in the future so thanks for now and uh, thank you francesco for your presentation now it is time uh, for um, i'm just uh, okay okay uh, the first question is quite uh, let's say cultural it says that uh, what is, in your opinion, the percentage of renewable energy we can reach in Italy? 
according to your PhD experience, for sure. No, okay, I will answer actually with uh, with precise numbers because what I can say is that uh, there's a plan uh, in Italy. Um, I don't remember the 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 sigla actually the the uh, what I don't know in English how, how, is, how it's called the sigla, but anyway. Um, but uh, I mean uh, the the idea is to get uh, the forty percent of not electricity, but uh, uh, renewables in the energy complexity. That means that in electricity means just double by the 2030, the amount we have now. So let's say we have uh, right now the 35% more or less, we should arrive to nearly, okay, 45, let's say nearly 50% by 2030. I don't know if it will happen, but uh, in the future, by 2050, I would say my opinion is we have the, all the possibility to get nearly 100%. So it's a it's a, a political uh, a political then uh, decision. But technically, I would say maybe also thanks to technology as a vehicle to grid, we we can reach the, uh, almost the 100%. Let me just say another thing, because the COVID actually was a good stress test for the uh, grid. And uh, in this month, we had, uh, uh, we reached uh, uh, until the 60% uh, as nationally speaking of renewables as, um, as, uh, as uh, electrical power of renewables. So 60% of the electricity in this period. And uh, uh, would be even more if we had technology as vehicle to grid able to uh, control already the, the renewables. So I would say as power installed during the COVID time, we could even arrive already to the 80% if we had kind of technology like this. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, another question is, does vehicle to grid impact on the duration of car batteries? Do we need particular batteries for this uh, goal? Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear it. Can you repeat? Uh, yeah. Uh, does vehicle to grid impact on the, direct, uh, on the duration of car batteries? Do we okay, need particular yeah. batteries? Yeah, yeah um, and on the, the duration, if I understood. Okay, this is a really good question. And uh, let's say that in literature, there's a big confusion on that. So there's not a precise answer. Um, let's say that the literature goes to, um, it can, they say that uh, the vehicle to grid can degradate until the 30%. But some other studies say as well that it can help the, 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 life of the life of the battery till the 10%. So my personal opinion, because even here it's our opinion, nobody has a, a precise answer, is the fact that if the vehicle to grid is done properly, that means without not discharging too much, so do not do a deep cycles of discharging and uh, using uh, um, power li level, uh, level of power compari comparable with, uh, with uh, the, the capacity of the battery, that means C uh, third. So means basically if we have 40, uh, 40 kilowatt hour, or a battery of 40 kilowatt hour means uh, uh, 13 kilowatt maximum mass power. If we, have, we use properly, um, the battery, if we do vehicle to G properly, it can have a negligible impact. Um, so this is my, my personal opinion. Then I, I can even uh, add something, but maybe I will leave the space for other question. Let's see. Thank you, Francesco. Another question, can you say more about the power loss and the efficiency for each time there is an exchange of energy between, between the vehicle and the grid? Okay, if I have understood, the question is about the efficiency of the battery, basically. No, uh, okay, I repeat. Can you say more about the power loss and the efficiency for each time there is an exchange of energy between the vehicle and the grid? 
Okay, that means uh, okay, that means basically the efficiency of the system, the vehicle to grid. Um, okay, uh, the the efficiency. I mean, it's again uh, hard to answer this question since we don't know still with which will be the system of the vehicle to grid. Um, but a possible answer is the fact will uh, I mean I imagine. Uh, the normal charger we can we are starting to see in, in the cities able to do uh, these bidirectional flows and the um, and the uh, control part is done by by internet basically so let's say that the efficiency of the vehicle to grid is that is is given by the efficiency of the battery and the efficiency of the charger uh, uh, roughly roughly speaking so the battery has an efficiency uh, really hard, especially the lithium-ion battery. Uh, the efficiency of this battery change a lot, basing on the ambient temperature, the power we are asking to the battery, and a lot of other other factors. But it rounds uh, around let's around 80, 90 percent. And instead, the converter, maybe you know, Giovanni, you know even better than me the efficiency of the converter, but they have efficiency, high efficiency, yeah. more than 90%, 95%. So to be conservative, I would say around the 80%, the, but the system can be 80% plus battery plus converter uh, to do this uh, power, power exchange. Thank you, Francesco. We have a, last, a final question. Can these techniques help in increasing the robustness to faults of the electrical grid? Yeah, definitely, definitely, of course. This this technology can help. I mean, uh, maybe in a direct and an indirect way as well, because if we have a more stable, um, if we have a more stable uh, uh, grid, we avoid fault and. Uh, because even if we get some fault and then we need reserve, we can uh, we can uh, uh, let's say um, reduce the, uh, the the damage of the of the um, of the fault. Uh, 